All right, should we get started? Um, we're going to talk about AppArmor 3 mostly. Uh, it's the current development release for AppArmor. Uh, it's going to be landing in Tumbleweed soon. Um, yeah. So if you don't know what AppArmor is, it's a mandatory access control system. That's about all I'm going to say for it. Uh, we are assuming you know the rest. Uh, if not, sorry. Uh, we've got a, a new logo that Noah Davis has been working on. Uh, this is, may not be the final version. There still needs to be a vote on it, but we should be seeing this show up soon. So um, first, we're going to take a step back and review some stuff that has actually landed uh, already. Uh, you can use some of this in Tumbleweed, uh, for sure, and even some of this in Leap. Uh, so AppArmor uh, has had the ability to do some RBAC or roles and uh, user space confinement or user confinement for quite a while, uh, but it's been quite limited. Uh, and it has quite a few sim uh, limitations. And it, when you use it, one of the big ones is it precludes uh, using other policies, so application policy that you'd normally associate with how you use AppArmor. Um, the easiest way to set it up has been PAM AppArmor, and that's not easy. It's really clunky. It uses um, AppArmor hats. If you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. Uh, but that basically means that your whole system needs to be confined to make this work properly. And uh, it, it causes a lot of issues with using it well. Um, so we're not going to go into it any more than that at the moment. Policy namespaces. So AppArmor has had policy namespaces for a long time. People haven't used them uh, for various reasons. They haven't been very useful till recently. So basically, it lets you have different namespaces each one with its own set of policies. They don't collide with each other. You can name them the same thing if you want. You can have different list of policies. They get managed separately. Um, when you see them in policy, when you see, when you introspect what's going on in the system, you'll see like the, the name namespace will show up with like a colon separating it from the profile name. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, the policy namespaces are hierarchical. Um, uh, that's about all I want to say there. <laughs> they, they, well, they, you, each, each one still gets its own uh, profile set. Each one also gets its own unconfined state, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, a policy namespace also defines a view and who can load, where policy can be loaded, who can load policy to where. So in this case, a system a task in the system namespace can see all the child namespaces of the system. Uh, when we uh, go put a task into the, say, NS3, it can only see NS3's policy and below. Um, so it's the NS3's children. Um, and it can only load policy into NS3 or its children, assuming it has cap mac admin. Um, and similarly, we can do the same with namespace 5. Again, we can narrow it down even further. So let's take a, a quick little demo here. Um, what do we got? So we're going to just jump into uh, namespace 1. And we get a, a PID back out of that that I can't quite read. Fifth. 389, is that it? Uh, we can look on the, it thinks it's unconfined. Uh, but if we do 5389 from the system, oh, I must have not got the right PID. Pardon me? 09. All right. You can see it's in the namespace. So, um, so the next thing we want to cover quick is stacking. This is something that's landed more recently. If you've got a AppArmor 211 user space and a 413 kernel, uh, you have access to this. It brings a runtime dynamic policy compos composition. 
uh, specifically an intersection of policies. Uh, this brings a lot of flexibility to certain parts of policy. Uh, so when you're introspecting policy, you'll see it show up like uh, somewhat like this. So it's separated with the double slash and ampersand. Uh, these two profiles together, it, I mean, it's not going to be very useful, right, for the system. Why would I do that? Um, so that's not useful here. So where is it useful? Uh, if we take a look again at the namespaces. So here we have a task, and it's just in the system namespace. Uh, that's all fine and well. If we now add uh, a stack so that we're stacking a system namespace profile, and a profile from namespace three to the task. What happens is the task is now limited to the view of namespace three, but the system namespace policy and namespace three policies being applied against this task. Um, where is this useful? Well, you know, the task can't see the system policy. Where this is really useful is, um, in containers. So we're going to jump back over here for a second. Uh, we can show the stack quick. It's, this is just silly, if I got it right. You should see the stack there. It's keeping me from using tab completion and stuff, because it's a senseless stack and it causes problems. But we can also, uh, say, jump into a namespace. And if I come over here, which PID did I use this to come out as this time? Uh, PID 5480. Or 04, 5404. <laughs> I should be mirroring this. So I can see it in front of me. You can see it's in the namespace where here it doesn't see itself as is in the namespace. Um, lots of fun. Uh, LXD supports this right now. So we can jump over to an uh, LXD. Uh, we've got a, a system with lots of profiles in it. Ah, I finger that. Uh, some of them are for the namespace, some of them are host policy. We can jump into our LXC container. So this is actually an, an Ubuntu host with a, an LXC container that's open, OpenSUSE Leap 42. It thinks it's... Um, unconfined, it's in its own set of stuff. We haven't set it up to use anything there. Um, I need to grab the pit again. We got 6841. Unfortunately, we, uh, LXC is, LXD is doing some pit mapping. 60, was that 64? 6841, yeah, okay. I'm having some problems with my six. Six. Come on. 481. So we have to figure the mapping out before we can grab the 26. 481. And you can see that it's, well, I got the wrong one, did I? Oh, six. I'm got missing two six. I flipped them. Yeah. Where did I do that wrong? Two six. Oh, two. It mapped to. I can't see it right now. Oh, that could be, uh, where's my grep? 
there we go. Oh, okay, we're not getting that to show up. Because I got the wrong one, 6841. Uh, yeah, I flipped those. Sorry. And then we can grip for two, four, four, seven. So you can see that it's got this long, ugly thing where it's using an LXD namespace. Um, that wrong one. All right. And we can further reduce the view by doing another namespace in a namespace. Um, so what's AppArmor 3? AppArmor 3 is uh, about deal dealing with some issues. It's got all this in it. Um, we have a problem where the user space tools, policy, and kernel are all moving at their own pace. Um, we had a little problem with the 414 development cycle where we um, broke some kernel devs. They weren't ha were not happy about that. Um, so while AppArmor 3 supports uh, some new features in the kernel, in fact, it's going to be required for new kernel features, um, it's mostly about improving how policy interacts with the system. So the big point really is all policy is going to pick up versioning. Um, the details are going to be hidden behind an include. So it's just like that, include policy version 3. What's actually happening in that at the base level, this can pick up more detail if we need to in the future, is it's going to define a variable for some conditionals if needed. And it's um, going to set the feature file, feature ABI that's used. Uh, currently, the feature, AB, feature ABI is either grabbed from the running kernel or uh, from a, the pinning that's set up in the config file. So you can pin to a version. This way, we can specify for each policy which version it was auth authored for. Uh, where in the past, everything was, all policy was using the same version when it was running on the system. This is going to allow for multiple versions to coexist because um, each profile has its own version. Profiles can move at different speeds and get updated at different times. Uh, the compiler is going to be responsible for figuring out the ABI of the, the policy and what the kernel supports and making sure things are, are, are compiled correctly and so it can be loaded into the kernel. Um, this does mean that it's potential you could have downgrades on rules. There will be options to either warn, uh, well, not warn at all, warn on those, or just fail the compile. Um, right now, 3.0 is really just the start of this, so there are some limits to what we can do with it, uh, and we'll be improving, in, improving it in the future. Um, so, uh, if this is about improving application policy or packaged policy, what about on older releases? So older releases don't have versioning, so putting versioning in will break them. Uh, that's somewhat expected. That happens with new features all the time, where you add a new feature, but it doesn't work on an older version because uh, user space just doesn't support it. Uh, we do have some work in progress to make that better. Uh, one of the things that's landing with AppArmor 3 is uh, conditional includes. And that can be used on the version if you want, because it's, again, abstracted away in an include file. So you can say include if exists. And now while all the policy versioning isn't being backported, the, the conditional includes have been backported. Um, so that will let some policy be used on older systems. They'll just ignore it and use the ABI that the system's supporting. Um, so we have a lot of policy out there that isn't version. So what happens with those? So what's going to happen with those is they're going to be, they're going to look at the kernel version, the compiler will look at the kernel version or ABI, and it will also look at a static set, 414 ABI, and it'll take a subset of those and say, well, this is where we lock down the ABI for no, for 
policy that hasn't been versioned. You can't use features beyond 4.14 in it. That what's supported in 4.14, and so that's what we're going to choose as our set point. Um, there is a few wiggles around this or quirks, whatever, for distros that have shipped non-upstream features. There will be some compatibility patches that they can use to continue supporting things. Um, so another thing we needed to deal with and we've been running into problems with is read-only images and pre-built policy. And not just pre-built policy for read-only images, which I'd call pre-shipped policy, because uh, you're shipping it with the RO image. But uh, the, the policy we use on boot, right? So in pre-3.0, we have a single binary policy cache. Uh, when you switch your kernel, you have to recompile the cache. That's often done on boot because it's not being triggered in, say, your kernel install. Even if it was triggered in the kernel install, if you don't reboot into that kernel, you still have the old policy on your running system. It needs to be reset if you happen to try reloading. Uh, lots of messes there. It, when, the, when it goes to compile the policy on boot, that slows down the boot because uh, compiles can take a bit of time, uh, especially on small devices. It depends what you have. Uh, it's usually not too bad, but we've seen bad cases. Let's put it that way. Uh, uh, recompiling policy at boot also precludes us from doing early loads because to do an early load, we can't do everything we need to do to actually compile the policy. Uh, which is a problem. Uh, so with 3.0, we get a per kernel binary policy. It, so it's multiple cache directories. Uh, it's based on hashing of the feature ABI that's supported for the kernel. Uh, they each get their own compiled policy. They could be the same in them, but with different features, they could actually, again, be different, just depending on how the compi stuff compiles out. Um, they do. This does handle collisions. If, so for, if some reason the hash collides, it probably won't ever. But we have checked that it will handle collisions. That's the dot zero on the end and the dot one versus, you know, the, with the two same hashes versus the different hash with just a dot zero. Um, so this is actually in Tumbleweed right now because we cut a 2.13 release with some of the AppArmor 3 features because people are wanting to play with this. Um, the only thing that isn't there, I haven't mentioned yet, is the fallback. So if for some reason you boot into a kernel that doesn't have a policy cache compiled, it's possible to fall back to a closest match ABI. Um, which will let you get some policy in. Uh, in addition to help support overlay images, where if you're shipping pre-compiled policy, uh, you know, either you can't have any local changes or you can't ship pre-compiled policy, we now allow an overlay. So you can define multiple policy, binary policy locations, and the local changes will update and write to the, the local store overlay, and those will override the uh, pre-shipped uh, read-only image. Uh, similar to the binary policy getting an overlay, text policy will also get an overlay. So you can define another location that a user can make changes, and that can over override what's on a read-only image. Uh, again, so it's just it's a matter of supporting read-only images. Uh, uh, where the Im where the locations are distro dependent, we haven't defined that yet. But even if we did as an upstream, distros may override it. So AppArmor three, like I said, is going to be required um, to support new features that go into the kernel. Uh, some of the things like uh, networking rules the base socket networking rules. SUSE has already supported for a while. They've been carrying an out-of-tree patch. To use the upstream 
version that landed in 4.16, uh, you're going to have to have an AppArmor 3. It won't work on AppArmor 2, whatever that we have in uh, Leap or Tumbleweed at the moment until we land AppArmor 3 uh, because we had to break the ABI to meet Linus's requirements. So it's been, it was deliberate that we won't support this on the 2X and deliberate that we broke the ABI. Uh, again, this is to avoid breaking kernel dev systems. Uh, so like I said, it's in upstream in 4.16 now. Uh, we're going to be landing a fine-grained Unix mediation upstream. We were hoping for a 4.18, uh, 4.18 merge windows coming up in a couple weeks, and we had to make some changes to it. And so we're not going to land those in 4.18. It's going to land at 4.19 now. Uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility on matching ver adder addresses and what can bind to where. It supports... Uh, anonymous sockets, uh, abstract sockets, and file system sockets. So it, it adds a, quite a bit of control over the generic socket, uh, course socket mediation. Um, Dbus mediation, this has actually been in upstream Dbus, the upstream Dbus project for a while. And if you enable it, it, it will use it if it, App armor, if the kernel supports it, what's required for the kernel su to support it is the, the fine-grained Unix mediation, uh, AF Unix mediation that we just talked about. So this, again, is going to be coming with 4.19. It's already supported. Um, but again, you'll require App armor 3 to use the upstream version. There's lots of options to play with in here. I don't have time to go over everything we can do with it. Um, you just have to go into the documentation. Uh, recently, there's been some IMA interaction or integration landed. Uh, so IMA allows controlling signatures on files and uh, is another LSM, in fact. Well, sort of. <laughs> um, so right now, we do have, if you look at profiles, you can, deter, you can control which, what app executable uh, profile will attach to with the attachment specification, like this one showing up here. So we have a Firefox profile, and it can attach to this big, big ugly file. Um, so one thing that's going to happen is there is a conditional, a new conditional that's going to come about. Uh, it's been defined very generically so that it can be extended. Right now, it's going to be working with IMA. Uh, and so you can say, I want to be able to match the IMA namespace so I can define uh, the IMA signature. I just threw a, a random bar in there right now. And so you can know that IMA is saying this file is actually a good file. I've signed it, signed off on it. And you won't actually be able to transition your profile without that signature that IMA says everything's good. Um, so beyond AppArmor 3, uh, we've got a few other things in the works. Uh, better systemd integration. So there is some integration right now with systemd. But uh, we've made it so the library, the AppArmor library, can load uh, policy. And we want to update systemd to be able to access the library directly instead of having to call into the compi policy compiler. This is going to allow us, to, with in combination with multiple kernel policy to uh, load policy as early as possible without at getting into the initRD. Uh, you can certainly do that if you want, but that's kind of something you want to avoid. Um, and the, we can run the compiler again later at boot in parallel to just verify that everything's compiled correctly and up to date. Uh, we're going to split, poli there, there's going to be a split, uh, an improvement on, on policy namespaces where the view can be split from the scope. Basically, the scope is what, what the policy applies to and the, who can control it. But the view, well, now you will be able to define namespaces that have the same view as the parent. So in this case, uh, 
NS5 has a view, the same view as uh, NS3, so it can see NS3 policy, it can see NS4 policy, but it's still controlled and it can't, you can't, if you're in NS5, you can't load policy to anywhere but NS5 and its policy is limited down to NS5. Um, so why would we want this? It's going to open up policy so that we can uh, open up our namespaces to user-defined policy, so users will be able to get to define their own profiles and load those. Uh, the system policy will still apply. The user policy will go into their own namespace and it'll stack with the system policy. Uh, tasks can, can use AppArmor to sandbox themselves. Uh, so it just opens up a lot of flexibility and it still allows users to have this, the, the usual experience that they have where they can see system policy. But if uh, you're a system policy author, you don't have to allow them to do that either. You have the options. There's a lot of flexibility there. Um, user confinement's going to get a lot easier. Pam Op Armor is going to be upgraded. It's got a, it'll go to a config file. It'll use change profile instead of change hat. Basically, you don't have to confine your whole system to use it. And uh, we're also going to add another attachment conditional where you can get policy restricted down to users. So you can define specific ones. That could be used in combination with Pam App Armor or on its own. Uh, we're going to have a, a learning interface which is going to help policy development, clean up the logs so you can get rid of all the complain messages. And we, this is coming soon too, uh, fine-grained mediation for IPv4, IPv6. The syntax is still a work in progress. Uh, but basically, you'll be able to set what addresses you want to bind to, uh, who you want to talk to. It'll integrate with SecMark. SecMark, the label, AppArmor label converts to the SecMark, so you'll be able to set the SecMark. In AppArmor policy, you'll be able to override defaults and set your own labels. Uh, IP tables will be able to react to the SecMarks or set SecMarks, and AppArmor will be able to respond to those. Sec uh, those. So uh, there's going to be a lot of flexibility here. Uh, any questions? Oh, we got one over here. Uh, fine grain policy for IP is fine, but do you have fine grain policy for a file system? Pardon me? Fine grained policy for file system, like access only to configuration files of that particular application or to the document I'm opening? Yes. So we already have a, a policy that will limit files and access to files on a per tax basis or per profile. Um, what is coming to improve that that isn't around yet and I didn't talk about is there's going to be a, a delegation support. And so, uh, for example, file dialogues can run in a privsep and it can have more access than the application and it can delegate extra access into the application. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to be able to land this year. All right, well, thank you.